Hey, good morning to everyone. This is Pete and Dorcas Vicente with you on this Sunday, April 23rd, 2023. How about that? Works out that way. We are Cornerstone Assembly Independent Pentecostal right here in Cambridge, Maryland. And we meet at a church called The River at 415 Academy Street every Sunday night at 7 p.m. and every Thursday night at 7 p.m. And we're trying to get things straightened out, making sure that we can have a nice service 7 p.m. on Sunday nights. There's another church that comes in earlier that day. And anyhow, it doesn't work out if they stay. <laughs> but anyhow, it could be the signs of the times. So this is pollen season, but it's also tornado season. Yeah. Yep. I just checked that out on the internet the other day. What is tornado season in the United States? Well, it ranges from uh, what they got here, March to June. In fact, there was one in Montgom Montgomery County yesterday, a small one. So there was a few others. There was one in North, North uh, Virginia, the northern point there of Virginia, near D.C. And so they are to be expected from time to time. And uh, if you ever notice, though, in the natural, that before something big like that happens, things get to be stirred up. In the natural, things get, just get stirring up. And sometimes the stirring calms down, but then it picks up again. And then all of a sudden, here's this whirlwind, this tornado uh, that's coming by, or some type of storm. And the Word of God, I checked this out some time back. Uh, Wilson indicates that there's at least one word for that's, that's often translated as whirlwind in God's Word. It might be this one we're looking at today uh, that can also mean hurricane. But anyhow, it's a storm, okay? It's a whirling storm. And yes, indeed it is. And so in the natural, hey, uh, you know, the things kind of pick up before the big one hits. And as natural is, so it is in the spiritual realm. But from our perspective, a little bit more slowly, you know, and we're going to show you something in a minute here. Uh, you have heard many pastors say this, many pastors that believe God's word and actually read it and study it, that we're in the last days. What's the last days? Is the earth going to blow up? No, not right now. It's not going to melt to an extra crispy point right now. Uh, but when we say last days, most of us mean the end times for the Gentiles and also the end times for the Israel as it is now. And we're going to look at that very shortly. The fact is, no matter how you slice it, Messiah is coming back real soon. I know they've been saying that for 2,000 years, and that's fine. In fact, if you were a Christian in the year, let's say, uh, 75 AD, the temple was destroyed, and you would th be thinking, Messiah's coming back pretty soon. He's coming back tonight, <laughs> whatever. And you'd be thinking that. That's good because you should expect your king's return. Amen? But no one back then, hardly, maybe I should say no one, but uh, you don't read much about anyone realizing it might just wind up for about almost 2,000 years that Messiah would not return. In fact, after the temple was destroyed uh, in AD 70, uh, that place was desolate for the Jewish people. In fact, if I understand correctly, they were kicked out of the area, couldn't come back. They changed the name of Jerusalem to something else, and it was changed back to Jerusalem and all. And uh, But uh, that was the situation. And during that time, until you get to the 20th century, the Jews were scattered all over the world. And they were scattered all over the world. And uh, But what happened was, and the reason why we think it's very, very soon, I want to show you something here. And i uh, got to do two things at one time here. Okay. And let me show you something here on the screen. Okay. Two really big things happened in the 1940s. First of all, the United Nations was established in 1945. Around three or so years later, 1948, Israel became a nation again. In other words, hey, you can have a homeland. You can be here in this certain part of what was called Palestine at that time. You could have that spot. Well, if you look at those two facts of history, and then you look at Joel chapter 3, verse 2, now you got a foundation for the fulfillment of Joel chapter 3, verse 2, which is Armageddon, okay? God's going to call these people into the valley of Armageddon, and he's going to plead with them there. Now, you will hear that word plead later on in this message, 
And it doesn't mean to beg. It means that he's taking them to court. It's like a, doing a plea in court, basically. And uh, he's going to take them to uh, spiritual court. Okay, so you had that in uh, 1945, 1948. And then a few years before I became a Christian, in 1967, the Temple Mount was captured by Israel. See, they, they had general territory out there, but they were not, they didn't have the Temple Mount. So they captured that during the Six Day War of 1967. And, uh, but then just about right away, they handed its administration back to the WAQF. I said that correctly, capital W A Q F, under the Jordanian. Hashemite custodianship. And so in other words, they're going to let the Muslims stay there with their mosque and all that and worship there. And, but Israel maintains to this day the security of the site. So even, you know, here's these Jewish or Israeli uh, police officers telling Jews, you can't come up here and pray. <laughs> and you know deep in the heart of those Jews, <laughs> the devout Jews, they want to get on that Temple Mount and not only get on the Temple Mount, they want to build that temple. Now, I really don't see anywhere where the temple needs to be built on that spot. I know it was, perhaps was. We just know that the Word of God indicates that the temple will be back uh, right before Messiah returns. And so maybe there'll be some type of agreement. Well, voila, we're, we might be heading that way. Uh, let me reveal this one, and that's another key word this morning, uh, revealing something to you. Look at the bottom there now. All right, in around 2019, uh, 2020, COVID was spreading throughout the world, COVID-19. Uh, it's a variant of the coronavirus, you know, and let me go on. I was going to go off the deep track on that one, but I won't do that. So you had COVID-19, and then... Uh, I wrote down the year for the Abraham Accords. I think that it was 2020. And uh, I should have wrote this down in my notes. But soon after, you got the Abraham Accords. And well, uh, right now, with COVID-19 and the Abraham, well, I missed some things here, okay? Uh, I want to show you something. Between the first, well, after the first two, let me take that first one away. And that's the first one. Let me take the bottom one away for you. Okay, all right. Now, look, from 1967, really from 1948 on, things have been stirring up. I mean, you had the Cold War, and it ended, and so on. People think this is great, this is really, and you had all these things going on bit by bit, and uh, but it, all, stuff is increasing all the time. There's more people being kidnapped and all. More murders are being uh, done. And all, all sorts of crime is on the rise. And then, you, you, so like, like I said, things were kicking up. So something's coming. Well, here's, a, like we said, here's another major incident. And so now, uh, when you get to more recent times in uh, 2019 and 2020, you got COVID-19 and the Abraham Accords. With COVID-19, what happened there? And how does that prepare? Uh, well, uh, it prepares, well, what, it, what it was doing basically, partly, was to train governments, not just the United States government, but governments around the world. And by the way, the United States government, you break it up into state governments. So it was training the state governments, the United States and other governments to, to how to, you know, how are we going to help people here and protect people, how to protect people, Okay. And some states did a pretty good job. Some states did not. I think Maryland was kind of even-handed during that time. Uh, but uh, that's neither here nor there. They were being trained on how to control society, to protect them from each other, right? You wear a mask, stay six feet apart, and so on, and, and all. I, I'm so glad when they got rid of that. <laughs> oh, my lands. You know, uh, let me go on. I, I'm, I'm going, I feel so much digress from my opinion, but that, I'm not here to give you my opinion. And then you got, uh, just after that, after that started, you got the Abraham Accords, and 
you read into that basically. Why is it called the Abraham Accords? Because uh, if you read the preface to it, in any case, it's trying to draw the, the people of the world, you know, uh, well, the people of the Middle East together and uh, come to some type of agreement because you got the Muslims and they trace their relig religious uh, ancestry back to Abraham. You got the uh, Jews, of course, and they trace their religious ancestry back to Abraham. And then you have the Christian, and I like to put that in quotes at this point, okay? Real Christians know better. But then, of course, you know, we point back to Abraham. We are sons and daughters of Abraham. This is true. We're spiritual sons and daughters of Abraham. So you got these, also you got these three elements in Jerusalem, basically. You got uh, Muslims, you got uh, Israelis, Jews, and then you also got Christians there. This, this is what's called the Christian quarter of uh, Jerusalem. It's quite interesting. And it's not like, you know, stuff happens in, Oh, let's find this in the Bible. No, it's been in the Bible all this time. And by the way, let me, once again, I went too fast there. Go look at the middle one there. It was the Temple Mount captured in, by Israel in 1967. Uh, I failed to mention Revelation 11, whereby the temple will exist, but yet uh, there will be an area whereby that the Gentiles shall trodden under. So what happens is now, so the Jews have, you know, uh, you can say they own the Temple Mount, but they uh, they left the administration of the worship there over to the to Islam, to the Muslims, that all. And so that's what you got there. Now, for the COVID-19 and the Abraham Accords, uh, you got, you know, the training of the world governments to control their people for protection and all and then this to me prepares the way for revelation 13 whereby uh for your protection probably everybody will receive a mark in their hand or in their forehead and so they can buy and sell understand this you know had it not been that the devil's behind all this and all this is nasty stuff and all it's a good idea because then no one could steal your identity no one can steal your identity if that happens, right? Theoretically. I think they can. I think there'll be some smarty out there that will try to do that. Uh, by the way, the means for this imprint in the back of your hand uh, came out, uh, what well, was a patent back in the, uh, the last decade of the 1900s, 1990s. And you can check that out on the internet too. And, and by the way, in the United States, there are some companies that require their employees to be chipped uh, and so when they come in to work they put their hand underneath what was the time clock and all and they punch in that way you can really punch him in <laughs> get a get that old fist and just punch you right in at all but you see if it wasn't for the antichrist the beast and all that it might seem like a good idea because you you you, you if people can steal your credit cards, they can steal your money. But what about the chip in your hand, right? And, or the mark in your forehead? And so it seems, it's going to seem like a very good idea. But you better read Revelation 13 because you talk about control, it's going to be big time control then. And so, and all during this time, you have all these other stirrings out there. You got wars and rumors of wars, and, and people say, that's been going on for years, but it's getting worse now. I think we're very close to World War III, in my opinion. Uh, also, look how people have become more unreasonable in these last days. You know, it, you know, they they get hyper sensitive about all sorts of things, and then they they, they argue and fight and fuss and sometimes hurt each other and kill each other, things like that, and. Uh, if you are a Christian, coming up for 2024, just focus on Jesus. You just research who you want to vote for. Don't get into any arguments, debates. Stay out of it. You want to be very close to the Lord because we don't know when we're going to die and we don't know uh, when the rapture is going to occur. And besides, we'll be trapped into a whirlwind. 
whirlpool, you might say. Uh, look at it that way, whereby you'll be sucked downstream if you get in that whirlpool. So don't get in, don't get your nose in the politics and all that. You just be focused upon Jesus, and and with that, be focused upon on the fact that if you're saved, if you're really saved. You want to win the loss to Christ, and you want to edify the true body of Christ. So you focus upon that. And uh, so there you got it. Oh, here's another one, too. Uh, faint of heart. How many people have been committing suicide a few years back, especially overdosing and so on? And it seems like there's, there's these different fads that occur every now and then to harm people. And there's all sorts of crazy things. What was a few years back, many young people were ingesting Tide Pods. You know, I forget what chemicals in that and why they do that. Look, you know, this is really wild. Also, now you got your fake Pentecostals really rising up. You got fake prophets. You got fake apostles. You know, you always have fake tongues. But now we got more fake prophets and more fake apostles. And listen, something is brewing. What's brewing? What's coming up? And years back, the Lord brought me to this particular text over in Jeremiah, chapter 30. Now, we'll be in Jeremiah a couple of times and, after, you know, one more time after this. But here is Jeremiah 30, verses 23 to 24. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goes forth with fury and continuing whirlwind wind it will fall violently on the head of the wicked the fierce anger of the lord will not return until he has done it and until he has performed the intents of his heart amen exactly that lord brought that to my mind uh some time back that hey you know look at this it's the whirlwind of give up that's what's coming and we're going to look at that well those two verses and yeah, I felt in my heart. I mean, I could have probably done this in one shot, but it would have gone on for like for an hour, basically. Uh, we want to save time at the end for prayer and stuff like that. And I don't want to rush this stuff. There is so much to what's called eschatology, the study of the end time days, end time things and all that. And so we're just going to do two things this morning. And we're looking at the whirlwind of Yavah. And here's the tornado warning from God. He's coming as, you know, as a whirlwind upon the face of the earth and all. And so, first of all, let's look at its devastation. Now, before we look at it, its specific devastation, which we will see in Jeremiah, let's look what happened before, okay? And uh, for that, I want to bring something over here. I hope I have it. Yes, I guess it's correct, okay? And so now something else is going to appear on your screen to cover that. And listen to this here. Let's 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 look what happened before in the past. In fact, Jesus, as recorded in also not just Luke but also Matthew, I believe also Mark. But I, I'm going to use Luke this morning because it puts two things together right close. Uh, cons first of all, let's consider the flood. All right. Now over in Luke chapter 17 verses 26 to 27 i know i got more on there but here we read about noah and as it was and i'm reading the new king james and on your screen is the american king james version because of copyright problems i'd say i'm not gonna bang my head against the wall trying to count how many words and all this sort of stuff so luke 17 26 27 and as it was in the days of noah so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, some time back, uh, as when I was doing this message for Cornerstone some years back, just about that time, uh, there was a picture. That somehow got on it, and I think it was with one of the weather sites, either weather.com or accuweather.com. I don't know which one, but they had a picture of this bride and groom. 
and you know holding hands happily and all that and in the background is a tornado i thought that is absolutely wild <laughs> i'm working on my sermon there my message and then i see this picture of a bride and groom and there's a tornado being on now i I would have loved to kept that picture, but once again, copyright. I'm not going to do that. That that site was copyrighted, you were, whether it's AccuWeather or Weather.com. It's copyrighted. So and plus also, I'm going to you know put people in a bad light and, and basically and then all. No, so I, I I couldn't get that picture. I would love to, but there's that bride and room with a tornado in the background. Okay, now let's read further in Luke. Moving on. He now slips over to the days a lot. You know, after the flood, you, you have a, I forget how many years exactly. After the flood, mm, I had, you did it one time. Numerous years, okay, centuries, if not at least one millennia. After the flood, you got uh, the days of Abraham and Lot. Lot, you know, went over to Sodom and Gomorrah. So that's where he felt he should move to. Lots of grass there and lots of water and so on. But it says in 28 to 30, now watch this. And I want to interject something here when we get to a certain part. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And I'll get to verse 30 in a minute. Now, Lot was brought out of Sodom. Now, look, for the flood, only eight people were saved. For this case with Sodom and Gomorrah, only three it would be Lot and his two daughters because Lot's wife looked back. She looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. And so uh, that was a the situation there. And by the way, if you go to that area, in Israel, or what do you want to call it, out there, okay, in the Middle East, there's, there's lots of salt there. There's the Dead Sea, there's lots of salt, my friend. Lots of salt. Uh, don't be looking for Lot's wife, though. Right? <laughs> I think she's long gone. <laughs> but she turned into a salt, salt. But know what it says? It, 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 Lot went out of what? Sodom. Sodom. And what was happening, what, was, what happened just before he got out? He let two angels into his house and you know and it's it, it's inferred there that he's protecting them from you know he, he knows how these people are so he lets two angels into his house and here at night the men of the city of all ages surround the house and said and they're banging on the door bring out those two guys we want to have sex with them yeah. Yeah. You know, don't tell me any sin's okay. Don't tell me homosexuality is okay. No sin is okay. Right. Now, it could have been thieves or whatever, but in this case, these guys are so warped, they don't want women. They want men. And so they're banging on the door, and you can read the story for yourself. So guess what I saw more recently? Just about maybe mm, two, three years ago. Once again, at a weather site, at one of the weather stations, a TV uh, TV station had a, had a weather caster and all that. But, you know, they have all these people there that you know do the weather casting. And they're on the staff and all. They had a picture of two guys. No, not a man and a woman, but two guys. One is kneeling down, proposing to the other. And guess what was in the background again? A tornado. A tornado. I would have loved to have gotten that picture. Again, copyright. I can't do that. You know, maybe I could have done it and used it for private purposes. But I would have loved to have gotten that picture and, and all. But I'm thinking, oh, man, it just sent chills up my spine, you know. And uh, it's very sad, you know, every true Christian can get excited about this, but then the people around us, they don't know. And they don't understand. And one reason why they don't understand is because the younger ones were born after Israel was a nation. 
Now, if, if you go back to the 19, let's say 1948, once again, when that happened, you uh, probably the Christian church, the real Christian church, said, oh, look at this, Israel's a nation again. And three years before it got saved, when the Temple Mount was captured, yeah, no doubt, gasped. And now I gasped when I heard that the Abraham Accords came out. I thought, this is so absolutely cool. It's happening, my friend. Now, look, look at verse 30. I'm taking my time. I'm not going to rush through this. Even so, will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed? Now, for your benefit, I have shown you what the word is in the Greek. Why well, Greek? Well, look at the word. Apocalypto. What? Apocalypse. Right? Which is another name for revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. And there's so many things I could tell you and for I'm seeing all that. I see pictures. I see pictures of Jesus. So sweet and so kind. And about maybe 90% of them, if not 95%, he's Caucasian. He's got what, uh, brown hair, or whatever you want to call it, sandy blonde, I don't know. And his beard is so nice and all that. And you could just see that he's so tender and sweet. Our friend, he didn't look like that. How do I know? Go study the Old Testament. He was a Jew, a devout Jew. For one thing, he was not supposed to trim his beard. I'm serious. Yeah, look at an Orthodox Jew. And a real, true, devout, Orthodox Jew. Look at their beard. It's all over the place. <laughs> and he wasn't tall because most Jews were not tall. You know, I, I looked that up one time. How tall is a Jew or Israeli? What are Jew? How tall is a Jew? And they're like, you know, they, they don't get beyond much. You know, you, the average was like something five eight, five six, five eight. So when I was Roman Catholic, it, we were told that Jesus, someone said that Jesus was a perfect six feet tall. <laughs> no, no. He's a small guy compared to six feet tall. Would never be playing basketball big time. <laughs> no way. But these pictures that you see of Jesus don't you don't focus upon them. Now, I I think there's some pros to that, but I see a lot of cons basically. I see a lot of things wrong with that and all. Uh, whereby people get the wrong impression that he's always sweet, always kind, and he he you know if you sin, he'll overlook it. No, he will not overlook it. He'll be in your <laughs> he gets in my face <laughs> until I repent. And that's the way it should work. Amen. And yeah, he's sweet. You know, he's looking. Uh, you know, you better, <laughs> you better confess you done wrong. You know, if you love me, and that's the point. If you love me, you will confess. Okay? But he's gonna be revealed, and it's not gonna be the the type of Jesus you see on pictures and stuff like that. And oh man, it, it, it just something. And when he's revealed, the remaining Jews will know. That's Messiah. It's Yeshua. It's Jesus, whom we crucified. Of course, everybody did too. But they realize, see, and, and, you know, check it out in Zechariah, also the first chapter of Revelation. They're going to be wailing when he comes back, and perhaps out of fear, but also out of pain that that yes, he was our Messiah, and look what we did to him and all, you know. And they'll be able to see the prince in his hands. When we say hands, uh, that's at the wrist back then. And also the spear print on the side. They'll be able to see that. Now, all right, let's. We talked about devastation, what occurred, and all that uh, with the flood and Sodom and Gomorrah. But what is what's God? What is what's, what's he about to do? Now, what we didn't read, we didn't read the whole area of chapter 30 of Jeremiah we didn't have time. Had you been a cornerstone, you'd be there for two hours. <laughs> but uh, here, 
we would now want to read at least two more verses from chapter 30, and they would be verses, uh, uh, verses uh, 6 and 7. And that's me. Ask now and see whether a man is ever in labor with a child. I'm going to say one thing kind of funny at this point. Last time I gave blood, I always say, you know, they, they ask these questions like, are you, are you pregnant? And I always answer, uh, basically, God did not make me that way. And they get a chuckle out of that. They put down, you know, of course, that was not pregnant. This time, the lady didn't take that. She wanted yes or no. I, I have stood on my ground with God's help. I said, God did not make me that way. And she finally had to call a supervisor over. But I thank God that I'm male, and if you're female, you should thank God you're female. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Ah, I knew that was coming. All right. But thank God. Thank God he made you the way you are. And if you are confused, come to Christ. I'll help you. And there are people, I'm going to interject this because this is overlooked in these discussions and debates and stuff like that. There are people that are born both ways. And we knew one personally, right? And this person prayed about it, and she felt that she needs to declare herself as female. But she was born physically with this problem. And so she decided to be female. Now, me, I will go the other way because females, you know, they get, they get attacked <laughs> at all. But, uh, yeah. but I will go the other way. I think I'll play safe here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but looky here. I didn't finish this out. I'm sorry. But over here in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, ask now to see whether a man is ever in labor with child. So why do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in labor? And all faces turn pale. Alas, for the day is great, for that day is great, and that none is like and so that none is like it. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. So there'll be a remnant of Jews getting saved. This is the purpose behind it, my friend. A great purpose to get these people saved. And for years, centuries, almost two millennia, they have rejected Jesus Christ as a Savior. Now, there are some Jews that come to Christ. That's great. And that's wonderful. But, you know, we, we, we want to see everyone come to Christ. So, uh, yeah, this is part really. This this uh, this is in the context of a passage that we have here. So, but they'll they'll be saved out of it. And if you study uh, Revelation six nine eleven thirteen and nineteen, you got the time of Jacob's trouble there. The end parts of Zechariah are more specific that the Jews will get certain Jews will get saved. And very beautiful uh, over in Zechariah, the end chapters of Zechariah. But now, uh, more about the devastation upon the face of the earth. Okay. And we're going to have to go switch scenes now, not scenes, but uh, switch the, the screen over to uh, basically Isaiah. And we want to read from Isaiah chapter 24, 17 to 20. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall be that he who flees from from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he who comes up from the midst of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth are shaken. The earth is <coughs> the earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. Drunkard. And shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it, and it will fall and not rise again. Ah, see now. In this case, earth here would be mainly like the inhabitants of the earth, okay? And so, because given the context here, uh, the world will still be around for another thousand years at the present that, based upon Revelation. But here we got the, uh, it shall totter like a hot hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon. Right there, its transgression shall be heavy upon. Right there, along with those holy scriptures, you will have, you will see the reason for the tornado of Yavah. And there's just more verses than this we've got about the world with Yavah. Mm -hmm. 
people will not turn away from their sinful ways and truly serve the one and only living God. Now, some will, but it's very few. Yeah. Now, we are seeing some glimmers of revival. And I, like say, I mean, real revival. And let me tell you right now, when the, I'm not knocking very much what I'm saying. I don't want to knock any of Okay. Pentecostals are known for, you know, getting emotional, stuff like that. But when you are in a church that's not Pentecostal, and then you see people being moved upon by the Holy Spirit, whereby they're weeping and crying over their sin, hey, I, this is real. I'm not saying what's a Pentecost is not real. Some, some is real, some is not, okay? But when you, when you have non-Pentecostals almost acting like Pentecostals, <laughs> and they're weeping and crying at all, and they're, they're they're repenting of their sin. Whoa, you know, something's up, my friend. I, I hope so. I hope so. Amen. Now we're going to get to the second part there. It's uh, direction. So we need to bring up that scripture again from Isaiah. If I can find it, not Isaiah, from Jeremiah. Excuse me. Our main text. And so one more time, at least we want to get over there to Jeremiah, chapter thirty. And the last part of verse 23, it will fall violently on the head of the wicked. Now, who's wicked? Well, everybody. It's not saved. Not cut to the chase there. We're running out of time. But look, you know, what's the situation? Right, let, let's start with this, though. Jehovah, Yavah, does have a controversy with the nations. And uh, I'm gonna, we're going to go to another part of Jeremiah at this time. And we want to read Jeremiah 25, verses 31 to 32. A noise will come to the ends of the earth, for the Lord has a controversy with the nations. He will plead his case with all flesh. He will give those who are wicked to the sword, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, disaster shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the farthest part of the earth. Now, let me ask a question. Don't you see disaster about to happen from nation to nation? I mean, we had some of that with COVID-19. But right, right now, as I'm speaking right now, there's some people, American citizens being evacuated from Sudan and, and other, other people, too, being evacuated from Sudan because of fighting out there. You know, there's going to be disaster after disaster. Uh, what out in the United States, West Coast area, West area, not the west coast but the western area there's a great they've been the great drought now the recent rains have helped but still i think it was president biden was saying they're gonna have to do something about this one reservoir we're gonna have to have to ration the water here which they gotta they gotta do they're what to protect their people right you can't let the thing run dry you, you won't have anything well not run dry but you get it too low it's really unusable so they're going to have to ration it, and you got more than one state using the same reservoir. And so guess who steps in? The federal government, right? And all sorts of disasters going on. You remember, like, maybe a few months ago, uh, people worried about the uh, one nuclear plant out in Ukraine. <laughs> I mean, right there in front of your eyes is the scripture. And then it's like, hey, you know, the whirlwind's coming pretty soon. It is coming very soon, the Great Tribulation period. The time of Jacob's trouble. All right, the wicked, the Jews and non-Jews have not who have not made their peace with God through Christ. That's who the wicked are. So it doesn't matter if you're Jewish or not. If you have not made your peace with God through Jesus Christ, uh, you are wicked. <laughs> no matter how you slice it. Ah, uh, do I have Romans on here? Yes, I do. Okay, and I didn't put that on there. Okay, so I want to read something from Romans now, and uh, at this time. And here we go. Put it on the screen for you. And once again, you got the American King James. I got New King James coming your way, or my way, here. And over in Romans, uh, we read as follows. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven to heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth. That's another one right there. But they don't let you, you know, some places don't let you have Bible, you know. Uh, you can't pass out tracks here. It used to be that if you go back, you know, you're back decades ago, you can go around any community pass out tracks. 
But you know, now we got these gated communities, stuff like that, and all. And you're forbidden to do it here. You, you know, all sorts. I can go on. Let me go with that, but I won't. All right. Who suppress the truth in unrighteousness? Because what they, what may be known of God, is manifested in them. In other words, they got the the image of God, but they're rebelling against it, and they don't want to be saved. And for God has shown it to them in various ways. Okay, and so sometimes, a lot of times, instinctively, an unsaved person will stay away from a saved person. I got relatives like that, so. Uh, Look, and if you continue on in Romans, you get to Romans 3.10. There's none righteous, no, not one. So that's both Jew and Gentile. All have sinned. This is 23 of chapter 3 of Romans. All have sinned and fallen short, or they keep falling short of the glory of God. So you have that. And, of course, the answer would be, we don't have it on the screen, but it's to make Christ your king, Romans 10, 9, 10. I just... Didn't felt like to use that one at this time, but if that is the fact that the only way to escape from His wrath is to be in Christ and remain in Christ. It starts off with you and I making a commitment to the Lord, and once you get in there, you want to remain in Christ. Like I said before, coming up as we get closer to the presidential election, just stay in your sanctuary in your heart. Don't get into arguments, stuff like that. Stay in the secret place of the Most High. And so now let's read Psalm. We're going to this Psalm now. Psalm 91, verses 1 to 4. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the pe perilous pestilence and he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Now we could deduce from this is uh, that the rapture will occur before the great trip. Listen, don't even fuss about that either. Just be in Jesus, okay? Uh, I have spoken with some friends, good friends, that are post-trip. And, you know, I, I see their point. God may want us to keep us here all the seven years. Why? For his honor and glory. And if, if he so wills, we'll be provided for during the seven years. But they'll be like, may we'll be like a witness. You got to say it, I don't know. But it doesn't matter. Because he, people say, you got to get ready for the great tribulation. Listen, yes, you got to be ready all the time. And you got to make Christ your king and be committed to him. Be in that secret place of the Most High. Uh, let me take a few more seconds here. You see, look, at, it talks about the uh, verse 3 here. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. We refer to as birds in God's word. And Jesus says that this is going to come upon the earth as a snare for the birds. So it's best to stay in the tree. Way away, far away from the ground, okay, and stay with Christ and be very close to Him. So if you're saved. I encourage you very much. Don't get into arguments and discussions about politics and things like that. Okay, I know you might love your country. That's wonderful, but we need to love the Lord first of all, and make sure we're saved because you know the United States could be gone tomorrow. I'm serious. There have been so many what security leaks lately. So many security leaks. That I don't like that. I don't like when secrets go out. I don't. I don't care if it was Trump, Biden, who's that one? Uh, Pence, Pence, and then the most recent one. Now, of course, they kept it in. They didn't put it on the internet. Well, Trump did, but uh, who? This other guy over Ma uh, was it Massachusetts was it? Yeah, it was Massachusetts. Uh, whereby he's putting this stuff on the internet. You know, just for you know, making himself look good. Nah, -huh. no, 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 no. See, uh, we're we're in dangerous place. The United States. Pray that people get saved and stay saved. And friend, if you're not saved, we would love for you to come, to Jesus Christ, to make him king of your life. And would you like to do that now? If so, please pray this prayer and mean it from your heart. Father, forgive me. 
I am a sinner. I ask Christ to come in to be my king, to be the center of my life. I give you all that I am. Father, help me work with you, not just now, but every moment of my life. And this I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As always, we've got something for you on the internet. Well, you've been just saved just now or been saved for a long time. First of all, we have a message recording teaching titled Seven, <laughs> yeah, Seven Reasons for Growth of Christ. And you'll find that uh, mainly at archive.org. And uh, so you go there, type in Seven Reasons for Growth of Christ. It's the word seven, S E V E N. Seven Reasons for Growth of Christ. And then my last name is Cinta, M A C I N T A. And uh, it will appear on the screen also, my last name, pretty soon. Uh, you can do that right here at the uh, top left hand corner. So uh, you type in my last name and you'll find that recording also. It's uh, in different places uh, at my Sapphire Stream site, and all the link for it is there. And then we also have, I think it's 12 lessons and uh, basic elements of Christianity at sapphirestreams.com forward slash BEC forward slash all lowercase letters. And as you see, there's a drop down box there. And that little white drop down, drop down box is Google Translate. And you may take those lessons in any language that Google Translate supports. You just cannot take the quizzes in any language. You got to take the quizzes in English. If you want to be able to spell my name, there it is, uh, at least in one place there, uh, at the left, uh, left hand corner at the top there. So that way you go get the severage for the Christ. But we have 12 lessons for you now, hopefully more in the future <laughs> and all that. But take those lessons, they're free. And also, uh, if it shows it's not secure, you can click on something there. And you will see that we do have, we actually do have a security certificate. And now we're going to pray for some Christians around the world. The first one is from Iran. In February of two, 2023, the Iranian government released thousands of long-held prisoners during a general pardon. Those released included several Christians in prison for practicing their faith. Upon their release, the government confiscated the work permits of the freed Christians so they cannot hold jobs to provide for their families. Additionally, they are constantly under government surveillance and they have to be very careful about interacting with other believers. <clears throat> said one frontline worker. Please pray, pray that the Lord will meet the needs of these recently released Christians. Please, I do pray for uh, these Christians that you might increase their faith, pray that you might help them to continually look to you for what they need. And I thank you that you have promised that you would supply all of our needs according to your riches. And if we think about that, your riches are many. I just pray for these Christians that you might provide for them. I pray that they might uh, uh, continue faithfully to you. And this we ask in your name and for your sake. Amen. My name is from Laos. There's lots of prayer requests from Laos a lot of times. When Yah put her faith in Christ in 2019, her husband and his parents abused and rejected her, believing she would bring down the anger of the spirits. After Yah's husband divorced her, sending her away and their three children away, uh, she turned to her parents for help. They also mocked her and refused to shelter her out of fear of losing their income and angering the spirits, telling her, Now you are God's daughter and not our daughter anymore. <laughs> Probably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let God's people help you instead of us. In response, the pastor and members of local churches are helping Yah secure land and build a house while Yah works, raises her children, and saves money to complete the house and pay back loans. Frontline workers request prayer for Yah and her children. Father, pray that you undergo her and not only her, but others too, like her, around the world that have been rejected by their families. And help her, Lord, to. Yes, definitely sent your presence that she is your daughter and our sister. And so we pray that you just meet these needs for her children and her. Protect her, watch over. We pray for her relatives that you soften their hearts. Bind the forces of Satan. We pray for the country of Laos. 
that you just bind the force of Satan and just let your word get through to people that more and more souls come to you. And this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, that was part one of, you know, train number one, God, part one. Uh, I'm not going to rush through it, man. And so come back next week for part two. We've got some more things coming your way. And remember, listen, we want to be ready for the Lord at any time. Whether he takes us, you know, you know, from this earth uh, before the rapture or the rapture does occur. But friend, we look forward to the king coming. And may God wonderfully bless you as you continue in him. You who dwell in the gardens, the companions listen for your voice.